Every Star Wars book has a handful of Easter eggs, legends, connections, and small references to other Star Wars stories. Midnight Horizon by Daniel Jose Older is no different, and today I'm going to run through everything I found while reading the book. There will be some spoilers ahead, especially at the end of the video. Most of the book takes place on Corellia, Han Solo's homeworld. Its status as a major shipbuilding world is important to the plot and the plans the Nile have for the planet. Several Pergil-class star cruisers are under construction there. Those are the same class of ship as the Halcyon, the galactic star cruiser that's opening at Disney World later this year. That class of ship is named after the massive whale-like creatures that survived in space and could naturally travel through hyperspace seen in Star Wars Rebels. Several Mimbanese are brought in to be used as extra security for the shipyards. They briefly appeared in Solo, a Star Wars story, but were created for Splinter of the Mind's Eye, the very first legend Star Wars book. The ships were designed by an Anzellan engineer named Shug Drabor. Shug is the same species as the droid smith, Babu Frick, and I love that someone so small is responsible for designing something so big. Drabor has in his ship collection a Spiral-class Vizcor Eviscerator Starfighter. It sounds similar, although not identical, in appearance and function as the Spiral-class assault ship from a Legends adventure book, Black Ice, for the Star Wars role-playing game in 1990. The Scree Rats of Corellia are mentioned. They first appeared in Solo, A Star Wars Story, but were first called by name in that movie's prequel book, Most Wanted, by Ray Carson. The Corellian Security Forces, or Corsec for short, are present. They were first created for the Rogue Squadron series by Michael Stackpole and the character Corrin Horn, who was a member of Corsec before fleeing the planet to join the Rebellion. The story specifically takes place within Coronet City, the capital of Corellia. Several familiar locations within Coronet are mentioned by name. Diadem Square first appeared in Aftermath Life Debt by Chuck Wendig. The Bottoms are mentioned, which was a district that was home to the Silo. The Silo was Kira's previous home before she was taken in by Lady Proxima. The Green is a location first identified in Most Wanted. The Blue Peaks of Corellia are new to me, but it does harken back to the planet's terrain in Legends. There's a street called Wyron's Boulevard. That was probably the location of a distillery where a Corellian whiskey called Wyron's Reserve was made, or maybe it was just named after the creator. Wyron's Reserve first appeared in the book Rogue Squadron and has since appeared in The Bad Batch in Sid's Parlor. A union dispute on one of Corellia's moons, Gus Talon, is central to the plot. That moon was where Wedge Antilles worked before briefly joining the Empire in Legends. Tyrena, another Corellian city, is mentioned, which was first written about in the Paradise Snare, part of the Legends Han Solo trilogy. We meet a few of the city fathers of Corellia. Finn Mos Tag is the father of chemicals and is likely related to the Tag dynasty of the Galactic Civil War, which includes General Tag from A New Hope. Declar Graf is the father of metals, and he must be related to the Grafs, who were known as explorers during the Galactic Civil War, but have already appeared in the High Republic as villains. Ovis Buckle is the father of finances. It would appear the Buckles have a hotel named after them by the time of the book Most Wanted, which includes a location called the Buckle Center. A character named Prybolt cares for a handful of Corellian hounds, the dog-like creatures introduced in Solo, A Star Wars Story. Prybolt's name is similar to Rebolt, who was also in charge of the hounds in the film. Prybolt is a Grindelid, the same species as Lady Proxima, but he wears a protective suit like Moloch. In fact, he is part of Proxima's family, the Garavolt clan, and she makes a brief appearance in the book, despite the story taking place over 200 years before Solo. Prybolt works for a young woman named Alice Ongwa, who has the nickname Crash. She is named after Alyssa Wong, who writes the current run of Dr. Afro Comics, and whose Twitter handle is at Crash Wong. The main Nile villain of the book is an Urkit named Sabata Krill. She has played a major role in the most recent arc of the High Republic Adventures comics, also written by Older. Actually, several characters from the High Republic Adventures appear in Midnight Horizon, and some events from the book are repeated in the twelfth issue of the comic. That issue and this book recount a battle on the planet Dalhar Hyde. The ruins of that battle can be seen in Dr. Aphra issue 8. Ram Jomaram, a young Padawan, attempts to coin the slang word wizard among his friends. He must be successful eventually, because Kitster can be heard using the word in The Phantom Menace. It's mentioned that Starlight Beacon was recently towed to the planet Dalna to assist with a massive disaster called by the Nile. That happened in the book Mission to Disaster by Justina Ireland. Through a series of flashbacks, we learn about how Jedi Master Cantum Psy left the Order for some time, first joining a circus on the same planet where their temple was located, Indovar, which was first seen in the High Republic Adventures. The circus eventually travels to Elfrona, a planet that's appeared in the novel Light of the Jedi and the Rise of Kylo Ren comic, both by Charles Soule. 
An incident involving a Jedi Master that slept through most of a battle is mentioned, that was actually seen in the High Republic Adventures Issue 6. The Irem and Erono War is mentioned as well as the Battle of Jeddah, both taking place about 200 years prior. Irem and Erono have already been seen as worlds with tense relationships in the book Into the Dark. The Battle of Jeddah is new. It's possible some of these events might be important in Phase 2 of the High Republic. A Shawnee character appears in the story, the same species as Diva Lompop from the War of the Bounty Hunters comics and the book Mission to Disaster. Shawnee can unhinge their jaws to eat beings whole. The Shawnee in the book attempts to eat an endangered animal, but is stopped by the Galactic Society of Creature Enthusiasts. That organization has recently been introduced for some fun little shorts on the Star Wars Kids YouTube channel. It's said that the punishment for attempting to eat that animal is probably community service picking up Hapabor dung. That does not sound pleasant after seeing those creatures in The Force Awakens. When Padawan Wreath Silas is speaking metaphorically, he uses Lepi ear quotes, which I guess is now the Star Wars name for air quotes named after Lepi, the rabbit-like species of the galaxy far, far away. After having gone missing for like a year, Yoda reappears at a crucial point in the book in the middle of a battle. I don't know if this was intentional, but it felt very much like Gandalf the White bringing the Rohirrim to the Battle of Helm's Deep to save the day. After the Battle of Corellia and the fall of Starlight Beacon, Yoda activates a recall signal to bring all the Jedi to the temple on Coruscant, similar to what he and Obi-Wan had to deactivate when it was used as a trap in Revenge of the Sith. Yoda brings with him a mysterious figure that sings a creepy lullaby to itself over and over. It's the same lullaby as the one from Older's comic, Trail of Shadows, so this new character likely has information about the Leveler and its attacks on the Jedi. Yoda says to forge our path to the future, guided by the secrets of the past we must be. As the final book of Phase 1, I think that's a clear transition into Phase 2, which will be set 150 years before the events of this book. And that's everything I caught. If you're interested in checking out Midnight Horizon, you can pick up the audiobook for free on Audible. Just click on the link in the description or visit www.audibletrial.com slash Star Wars Explained. The audiobook is out right now and the production value on all the Star Wars books is very high with sound effects and music. It's like listening to a movie. Signing up for an Audible trial will get you a credit for one free book, and you can use it on Midnight Horizon, or the other High Republic books, or just about any Star Wars book you can think of. Or get any book you want. The point is, you get a free book, and you'll be supporting the channel when you do. But that's it for today. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, and consider checking out our Patreon page, where we'll be holding a book club discussion of Midnight Horizon in a couple weeks. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.